Hello and welcome to this Open University video tutorial designed to supplement the module T189 Digital Photography. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at the histogram tool along with the basic adjustment tools for assessing and adjusting the exposure and tones in an image. In the develop module the histogram is located at the top of the right hand panel, here. The histogram itself is a graph showing the brightness values for the selected image from 0 to 100%. On the far left, the values close to 0 are the deep shadows and the blacks. Moving towards the middle, the tones get brighter into what is traditionally termed the mid-tones. Moving towards the right, things get brighter still until they reach 100%, which is white. Lightroom itself divides the histogram into five sections to make it slightly easier to adjust specific tonal properties of an image. If I put my mouse over the histogram here, I can show you these. On the far left we have the blacks. Next to that is the shadows. These will be the values that are slightly lighter than black, such as the dark tones in the foreground here, and the reflections and some of the tones in the bridge here, whereas the blacks will be those very dark tones up here, and here. Following on from the shadows we have what Lightroom calls the exposure values which are the middle exposure tones. These will probably be some of the sky here, the reflections here, things that are neither too dark nor too light. Moving on to the right we have the highlights. These will be those areas that are brighter than the midtones but not completely white such as the areas of the sky up here and down here. The far right of the histogram is the whites, which will probably represent the very brightest values of the sky, which appear as white. Each of the tonal ranges in the histogram has a corresponding slider down in the basic adjustment panel here, under where it says Tone. The first slider is the exposure slider, which represents the middle tones, here. By moving the slider left or right, I can change the overall exposure in an image. Moving it to the left decreases exposure, and moving it to the right increases exposure, brightening the whole image. You can see that what's happening is that the tones are being dragged out and pushed towards the right-hand tonal values. Moving the slider to the left drags all the tones towards the left-hand shadows and blacks. I can reset any slider by double-clicking the label here. The next slider I'd like to look at is the highlight slider. This adjusts the highlight values, which are those between the midtones and the whites. So let's have a look at these. So I can darken these down and get a lot of detail back in the sky. Or I can brighten them up and push them towards the whites, overexposing the sky. Again, let's reset that for the moment. Next, we have the shadow slider, which does the same thing, but for the shadow tones. I can push them up towards the mid-tones, which will increase the brightness of those tones, such as the bridge here and the reflections, without affecting the other values. Conversely, I can bring them down to make them darker, pushing them towards the blacks. Notice how the other tonal values, such as the sky, have not changed significantly. Of course, there will be some change, as there are some shadow values in the darker clouds. The whites, as you might expect, are the very brightest values in the image. Again, I can adjust these down or up. You can see that dragging it down doesn't affect many of the other tones. I'll just drag it up a little to overexpose the sky. The blacks should adjust the darkest tones in the image, those closest to black. So you can see that we can push this up or down as before. The image that we're left with here is what you would call quite a high contrast image, and it actually suffers from some overexposure and underexposure due to my deliberate manipulation of the white and black sliders. The reason for making these final two adjustments was so that I can show you another useful function of the histogram, the exposure clipping warnings. These are located up here in the top corners of the histogram. I can click them to turn them on individually, or I can press the J button on my keyboard which turns them on both together. The blue colours here show areas of shadows that are clipping, that is to say areas that are pure black or zero on the histogram. It's a good idea not to have too many of these clipping shadows, although some scenes will work better than others. The red values are the areas of highlights that are overexposed, or clipping into white. Again, you don't want any of these if you can possibly help it. 
If you ever have any clipping warnings, you can dial them out using the sliders as we've already seen. That looks much better. This is still a high contrast image because of the range of tones from shadows to highlights, but it's much better for having those clipping highlights and shadows reduced. High contrast images usually have a lot of visual impact, but sometimes your images will be very low contrast, such as this one taken of the Jubilee Bridge in London. You can see the low contrast reading on this histogram because all the exposure values are bunched into the middle, with almost no shadows or highlights. At this point, it's worth noting that the tonal ranges in the histogram can actually be adjusted without using the sliders. You can simply click and drag the tonal range that you want, and it will change. So here I can just adjust the middle tones slightly. Sometimes low contrast images can work, but here I think it lacks impact, and it just looks a bit flat. I always like to see quite high contrast in images which have strong lines, but it's down to you and your personal taste. A really useful slider for this is the contrast slider here. Dragging this to the left decreases the contrast even more, and dragging it to the right increases the contrast, and you can see in the histogram that it's stretched out the tones both to the left and to the right. There are now more shadows and maybe a few more highlights too. I'll just slightly adjust the exposure here. You can see that actually dragging the histogram to adjust tonal values is a really great feature because you can watch the histogram as you make the changes. Let's add a little more contrast. Of course we can extend that further by darkening the shadows, brightening the highlights, darkening the blacks, etc. One thing you'll notice is that it's also increased the saturation of the colours but the saturation slider hasn't been changed. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. This is an interesting byproduct of increased contrast. Sometimes it's useful, but sometimes you want to be careful not to oversaturate things, where the colours might look false or unrealistic. We'll continue looking at the histogram and the basic panel in the next tutorial. <laughs> Get more from the Open University. Check out the links on screen now.